two parts to the required practical for waves. There's a ripple tank, which I'm going to do first, and there's one with vibrations on a solid, which I'll show you second. This is quite tricky. It's tricky because the question can be slightly confusing, so I'll just introduce you to the equipment. In your lab, you might have seen a smaller ripple tank. In the exam question, it's generally this one. So it's a tray with about half a centimetre of water in legs, bulb on top. Now the important bit is it's got a motor that's suspended on rubber bands there. And I can, you'll probably hear it, I can turn up the frequency to the motor. So it's vibrating and as it vibrates, it's just resting in the water. So it's causing a ripple to go across the water. You'll see a closer view in a minute. So it's making little ripples and I can just about see them here, but by me dangerously balancing a bulb above the ripple tank, we can see a shadow of the waves on there and it's those that we're gonna make the measurements on. So the measurements we're gonna be making are all gonna be on that piece of paper. And the equation that we're gonna be using is the wave equation. There's probably about number, number three on the list of equations for physics. The velocity of a wave is the frequency times the wavelength. Velocity in meters per second, frequency in hertz, wavelength in meters. So as soon as you see the required practical and you see that diagram of the ripple tank, that's what you should be thinking. Okay, so with the wave equation, we're gonna start off measuring the velocity. So velocity, thinking back to the forces topic, velocity is distance over time. So I've already got distance marked on that piece of paper from naught to 50 centimetres. Remember the 50 centimetres needs to be in metres, so 0 0.5 metres. So if I can then get a time, the velocity will be 0 0.5 metres divided by that time. So this is the time that the wave is taking to go from 0 to... So I'm just going to do three times and then I can find a mean. Ready, steady, go. 1.49, so time one, 1.49 seconds. Reset, ready, steady, go. Right, that looked a bit anomalous to me, but we'll write it down, 1.78 seconds. See what the last one comes out at. Ready, steady, go. Uh, it's 1.88, so I'm just going to take that one out and I'll do one more. Go. Yeah, 1.79. Okay, so we've got three times. Let's do a mean of those. Add them all up and divide by three. Out comes the pink calculator. 1.78 plus 1.88 plus 1.79 divided by three. So that anomalous result had gone 1.82 to th uh, three significant figures, 1.82 seconds. So we've got a distance of 0 0.5 metres divided by 1.82 seconds. So distance divided by time, 0 0.50 divided by 1.82 is velocity of 0 0.27. I'll go to three significant figures, five meters per second. So that's V. Okay, velocity done, next on to frequency. So frequency, definition of frequency is the number of waves in a second. So we need to know how many waves we're getting so we can do some wave counting. And if we time how many waves we're getting in a set amount of time, then we'll know the frequency, it'll be the number of waves over the time. So what I'm gonna do is, to make life simple, I'm gonna time 10 seconds. And then I'm going to get the number of waves that I can get reaching the other side in 10 seconds and divide that by 10. So all I'm going to do is time 10 and count at the same time. 
which is easier said than done because they're not all that visible. I'm going to pick a point, I think, that is a bit more visible. It fades a bit down here, so I'm going to pick this point here where I'm going to start counting. So I'm going to click and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, Right, stop. Not going to do that. I'm going to go too quick. So I'm just going to do five seconds instead. Struggling to keep up. Ready, steady, go. One. Nineteen. Right, I'm just going to calculate that, but I'll give it another go in a minute because I'm not convinced I was all that accurate with that. So 19 waves, I reckon, divided by 5 seconds gives a frequency of 3.8. 3.8 units of frequency. So 3.8 waves in a second. No wonder I'm struggling to count them. Going to give that another go. If I, get, if I do it again and I get something quite similar, I'm going to take that. I'll pick the same point. Right, maybe 20, so we'll take that. I'm not going to bother doing that calculation again. 20, 19, I'll take it. So that's giving a frequency of 3.8 hertz. So it's velocity done, frequency done. Last one, wavelength. Don't be put off by the symbol, lambda. So it's the size of the wave from peak to peak. So if we saw it on here, it would be about there from peak to peak. But trying to measure one is difficult. So what we'll do is we're going to try and mark out 10 waves along the paper. So we're going to have 10 waves. So if we find the distance of all of those 10 waves, and do distance divided by 10, we'll get the wavelength of one wave. So I'm going to start off one. I'm going to take a photo at this point. Yeah. Just going to take a, a photo and then on the PowerPoint later, I can mark it a bit more accurately than I'm doing now. Okay. Three. So three. 10, Ten waves in 22.5, so 22.5 centimetres, put that into metres, 0.225 metres, divided by 10 equals 0 0.02, I'll go to three significant figures, 2 five meters which is 2.2 centimeters seems about right just going to redo that wavelength using a still photograph and we can see the difference that we get and it'll give us some idea of what errors we might have had maybe a question that comes up in there so i've just got a still shot there with the ruler across the top uh, so we're going to look at the distance for 10 waves so if i put a line marking the first one there on the zero of the ruler so the next will be one wavelength, two, three wavelengths, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got ten wavelengths marked on there. You'll notice that the lines that I've used to mark them have ended up not being parallel. That's because the light shining above it has made a slight angle over here where it's central in the middle of the screen. So I've just tried to mark the, the middle of the light band of the wave so on that last one so number 10 we can take a measurement from there so 10 waves has got a distance of 0.39 meters there so if 10 waves have got a distance of 0.39 meters one wave will have a distance of 0.39 divided by 10 0.039 meters that's the wavelength